It has been a long two-year journey from when we first bought our block of land and started our build. From selecting every detail, whether it be colours or fixtures and fittings, it's been a fun and wild ride to say the least. But now we've finally reached the part where we turn our house into a home with lots of post-build projects and DIYs to make it our own, and we're excited to share this journey with you. Welcome to our home series. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, my husband and I are going to be applying an epoxy coat to seal and protect our garage floor. So this is what the garage looked like before we got started. Not too much to clear out. We literally received the keys to the house the morning of this day. And before we moved anything in, we thought it would be easiest to get the garage done before we moved because we knew once we start moving things in, it's just going to be a hundred times harder to clear and clean out the garage. This was our first time doing anything like this. And overall, it was a pretty easy process. However, I would say the prep was the hardest and most time consuming. Um, so we first began just by sweeping the floor to remove any debris. And we also used a blower as well because the wind was working against us. And then came out the pressure washer. And honestly, I thought the floor was pretty clean just after sweeping it, but boy, was I wrong. Um, now you don't need a pressure washer if you don't have one. You can just use a normal hose and a scrubbing brush, but we already had the washer, so we decided to use it and it did make the cleaning process a lot easier. So once you remove the excess water, you want to get a degreaser and really work it into the floor with a broom to make sure you lift off any oil spills or any other residue that may be on your floor. This is also the time you can use a scraper to get off anything that doesn't come off with the degreaser. Now we use the Dymark solvent based epoxy coat and in this box you get the base and activator as well as the concrete etch and the decorative chips. So we decided to go for the slate color which is like a light gray um, but there are a few other colors that you can choose from in the Dymark range. So after you've rinsed off the degreaser you can check your floor for any cracks and fill them if needed because ours was brand new we didn't need to do that so we could just move on to the next step. So you want to grab the concrete etch and mix it in with 10 liters of warm water in a watering can because this makes it the most easiest way to apply. Um, and you want to stir it thoroughly until the etch has completely dissolved. So we just started pouring the solution and we worked it into the floor with a broom. The solution can start to fizz um, when you're doing it and it's completely normal. And once you've covered the whole garage, you want to wash it off thoroughly and make sure there is no residue remaining. Now at this stage, it was like 10.30 at night, and so we just used our normal hose to wash off the solution, which did take more time, but we didn't want to use the pressure washer because it is loud and we didn't want to piss off our new neighbors. So the next day, we just did a once over with the vacuum, and then we started to prep for the painting process. Um, some extra things we purchased were a paint tray, masking tape, paintbrush and a paint roller. And for the paint roller, just be sure to use a concrete and paving roller. Um, we also used a roller extension. This just makes it heaps easier to save your back. And we first started off by masking off the edges um, of the floor with some painter's tape to have a clean line and to also protect the walls from the paint. Next up, we divided the decorative chip into four even parts as it's recommended to apply the paint in quarters and apply the chips as you go along. Once that's all done, mix part A and part B separately and then pour each can into a large mixing bucket and stir well. It's best to tape off the edge of each can before you pour um, just to minimize any dripping of the paint. We then started pouring small amounts of the paint into the paint tray and working in sections. So with each section um, you do, you want to use the paintbrush first to trim the edges and hard to reach areas like the corners. And then once that's done, you can go in with your paint roller. 
The painting process was pretty straightforward. Um, it was a little tricky at the very start because you don't really know how thick to apply the paint and you don't want to run the risk of running out of paint at the end. Um, fortunately, we had quite a bit of paint left over and in hindsight, we could have made the first two sections of the garage floor a little thicker. Um, nonetheless, it still looked great. Um, another thing we decided was to start by painting from the back of the garage and work our way to the front. Um, one, not to get trapped at the back where we couldn't walk over the, uh, the paint. And two, it's better to sort of get the mistakes, if you will, out of the way in the back where you can't really see it. And in this area of the garage, we'll probably have some shelves and things like that up. So that will also help with uh, hiding some beginner mistakes. Once you paint one fourth of the floor, you want to apply the decorative chips to the wet, freshly painted section to ensure adhesion. We found the best technique with throwing the chips was to just throw it up in the air and let them drop naturally. Um, this gave it the best look as opposed to throwing them at one area, which made it look weirdly concentrated in one spot. So you basically want to keep repeating this process until you have all four sections done. Um, and once you let it dry overnight, the floor is ready for light foot traffic in 24 hours, normal foot traffic in 48 hours, and then you need to wait seven days before moving cars over the surface. Another thing I'd like to also mention is that when we left the floor to dry overnight, we closed the garage door pretty much all the way, but we left about five centimeters off the floor open um, to one, help it cure properly, and two, to not also have any smudging um, of the paint from the garage door. So this is what the floor looked like the next day, and it has been really hot the past few days in Melbourne, so the floor felt really dry, um, and it was ready to have the masking tape come off. And we are absolutely stoked with how it turned out and with the color. Um, because we filmed in the evening, um, for some reason the camera is showing it as like a blue purple color, but it does have a true gray base. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the first episode of our new home series. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos and episodes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye.